Hi and welcome to this video. This time we are looking at Newton's second law of motion. And uh, just before we get there, let's quickly revise what Newton's first law said. Well, the first law simply said if we had an object that was in motion, that object wants to stay in motion. And um, an object at rest, in other words, a velocity equal to zero at rest will stay at rest unless it has forces acting on it. Okay? And more specifically, unless there is a net force acting on it, which means that an object in motion or an object at rest, if it's in motion at a constant velocity, okay, or it's at rest, it means there is no resultant force acting on it, or that the resultant force is simply equal to zero. That is what the first law comes down to. The resultant forces acting on it, in other words, adding up all of the vector forces, will give us zero. Now, what does the second law say? Well, the second law says the following. It says that when a net force, that's of course referring to the resultant force, when a resultant force acts on an object, so this time we have a force acting or a resultant force acting on an object, the object accelerates in the direction of the force. Okay, so instead of moving at no velocity or moving at a constant velocity, it will be accelerating. The acceleration that it is experiencing is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force. That simply means if the force gets bigger, the acceleration will get bigger. If the force is smaller, the acceleration will be smaller. If the force doubles, the force, the acceleration will double. If the force is halved, the acceleration will be halved. That's what directly, directly proportional means. Okay, so the acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force, and indirectly proportional to the mass of the object. Indirectly proportional means the opposite. In other words, the more the mass is, okay, the smaller the acceleration will be. Okay. The greater uh, or the less the mass is, the more the acceleration will be. Okay, so all of this should make good intuitive sense. So I like the example of the car, even though I should choose examples where drawing it might be easier. Okay, so excuse my box car drawing. Okay, but there is a car, and consider the engine of the car. Okay, there's the engine of that car and now imagine the force that that engine can supply to the car so the more powerful the engine the greater is the force that it can drive this car with so a stronger engine will be able to apply a stronger force to turn the wheels of this car okay which means its acceleration will be greater in other words, from 0 to 100 kilometers sorry, per hour, okay, it can do that quicker. That means its acceleration is quicker. So, for example, my car takes about 20 seconds to do that, okay, while the Bugatti Veyron can do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in simply 2.2 seconds. That's quite embarrassing, isn't it? Okay, so why can the Bugatti do that? Well, there's a few reasons, but one of the main reasons is simply because, well, obviously the main reason is simply because it has a more powerful engine um, driving that car's acceleration. So because that more powerful engine can supply a greater force to the turning wheels, it will obviously have a greater acceleration. Okay, so we conclude the first thing that when the force that is being applied, the net force acting on an object is increased, the acceleration will increase. And obviously, when it is decreased, the acceleration will be smaller. Okay, how about uh, the mass? Well, now take that Bugatti's engine and put the Bugatti's engine in a massive truck. Okay, so there we have a big truck. and put that same engine 
in this truck okay truck engine sits about there now it's the same engine it can supply the same force but who will win in a drag race between this truck with that engine and the Bugatti well the Bugatti is a little bit bigger than a normal shaped car and a lot prettier than I'm trying to draw here okay but it's still much smaller than a truck and this truck will weigh way much more especially that ugly wheel that I draw there okay way much more than the actual Bugatti in other words um, its mass will be more than the Bugatti which means its acceleration will be less because mass is indirectly proportional to the acceleration and again that simply means means when mass increase acceleration decreases okay now all of this can actually be summarized in a very simple formula okay acceleration will simply be equal to force divided by mass. What does that mean? Well, here we can see that when force increases, acceleration will increase because it's in the numerator. When the numerator gets bigger, the result gets bigger. And here we see it's divided by mass. So when I'm dividing with a number and I get an answer and I divide with a bigger number and I get a new answer, that new answer will be smaller. Okay, So the bigger the value is that I divide with, the smaller the, the result will be. And that means when mass increases, acceleration will decrease. And here's the simple formula that acceleration is equal to force divided by the mass. Now we can also rewrite that formula a little bit differently. So if I have my formula that acceleration is equal to the force that is applied on the object, the net force actually so it should actually be the resultant force divided by the mass of the object Okay. then I can also just solve for this resultant force, so I multiply both sides with the mass of the object Okay. And then I get the following. This cancels and that cancels. That the resultant force that I have to apply on an object with a certain mass and I want it to accelerate at a certain uh, rate is calculated by taking the mass of the object multiplied by the desired acceleration. Okay? And this is the beautiful consequence of Newton's second law. Let's have a look at a few examples.